Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the Android Guy. Today I'm bringing you a beginner's guide to the Note 2. So this is just going to be a demonstration on getting to know your phone and how to use this device. Uh, so first step I want to go over is you do have, of course, the S Pen. So the S Pen can be used to navigate your device and move throughout the screens and uh, go through any of your touchscreen features. Now, to go more in depth about gestures that the S Pen does, such as something along the lines of this, oops, something along the lines of that, uh, I will go over more so in its own video called uh, Note 2 Gestures, so make sure to check out that video for more advanced uh, tasks. For general usage, though, uh, we want to go over the basics, so if you want to go under Phone, this will be your dial pad, um, and uh, this will be your pause button right here. So if you ever need to do a pause, and if you want to hold this down, you can put your phone on vibrate uh, just by holding that down, and then it'll put your ringer on vibrate or your ringer on. So um, you have your call log right here, which we can see the call log right here, and it'll have all the calls. You can have your favorites right here, so favorites of people as well. And of course, you can have your general contacts, so all of your contacts from your list. Now, the other thing um, you can always do from the contacts or from the favorites is uh, something very nice, which is if you swipe this way, you will make a call. So swiping this way will make a call, and if you swipe to the from the right to the left, you can message the person. So that's a really nice feature that you have the ability to do um, right away on any of the uh, favorites or the contacts. So it's just nice. Um, you also have the ability to scroll down through your contacts by holding down this area, and you can scroll down all of your contacts, such as simple and easy as that. Um, you also, of course, can have, uh, once you're in your contacts, you can have groups as well. So you can have your groups and everything like that, um, and just people that you know and want to talk to. And you can message a person in a group, or you can uh, talk to everyone in the group. Now, going back to the phone itself, another important thing that you have the ability to do is, if you push the menu button right here, you can actually use one-handed operation which means that you can actually dial from right-handed or dial if you're left-handed. So a really nice feature is just the ability to do that. And to take that off, of course, just push menu and one-handed operation off. And if you go to call settings, um, right here is where you can uh, set a rejected uh, messages. So any rejected calls or any rejected messages will go right here. Um, and you can manage the person that you reject. Um, you can also do a volume uh, increaser or equalizer uh, right here as well. And of course, last thing I just want to show you in the context is if you uh, go to the call log, so just want to protect people's numbers here, of course, if you hold down on a call log, you can actually add the person to the rejected list. So if you have a person that calls you once and that you do not want to hear from them again, then you can just simply reject their call. Now messaging is where, you, of course, you will have your text messages. So just go to messaging to create a new message, just right here at the top. And also, if you do it sideways, then, oops, do it sideways, then it'll rotate. Why it's not rotating right now? But it'll typically rotate and then it'll have your uh, two-person view. Let's see if it does. There you go. So then you have your two-person view for your rotation. So just a nice feature that you have right there. Your Play Store is where you will be getting all of your apps from. So you just go into the Play Store to get uh, apps as well as everything else. Your Play Store actually has everything for you in Android. So let's so turn the rotation off. Yes. So for your rotation, uh, for your apps, you can get your apps, your music, your books, magazines, everything right from here. 
you often have discounts, such as right now they have discounts on music, as well as, um, I believe, on some of the Oscar uh, winning movies, as well as like free songs. So you just have a lot of uh, different discounts at times for Android in general. Now, if we want to go right here is the app drawer. Now this is where you find all of your apps in very simple grid-like view, and generally it's in alphabetical order. If we wanted to make sure that it's in alphabetical order, we can push the menu button right here at the left, and then go to view type. From view type, we can see if it's an alphabetical grid, a customized grid, or the alphabetical list. So I like alphabetical grids, so I'll keep it in that, just so you always know where everything is. Now, if we also push the menu, we can also um, go to quickly uninstall any apps. So this brings a minus, so if I wanted to uninstall an app and take it off, I can simply do so by pushing the minus, and then it tells you this will uninstall permanently. And so that's how simple and easy uninstalling apps is. The last thing is, is on your menu, you can actually pick a selection right down here at the bottom, which is hide applications. So you can actually hide applications, such as this row, from being able to be seen. So if I hit done, those apps are now unable to be seen. They are still on my device, but if I were looking at this phone, I would not know they were there. The only way to show hidden apps is if you highlight right here, and normally it'll be like this, but then you can move up and then show hidden applications. So that way you can see the ones that are hidden. Um, and then you can select any of them to come back, and as soon as you hit done, they will be back. So that was the basics of the app drawer. Now if we swipe down from the top to the bottom, we have our notification area where we will get our text messages, emails, and uh, just simply all of your updates on your device. Now, you also have the ability to go through toggles. So you have Wi-Fi, GPS, Vibrate, which um, if you tap these toggles, they'll go through the different motions. So mute, sound, and vibrate. Your screen rotation, so if your screen rotates or not. Bluetooth, data mode, uh, power save mode, which I'll be going to a little bit later. Driving mode, all share, and multi-view. Or sorry, multi-window. Um, you can also turn on down your brightness right here or just simply set it to auto. And right here at the top, we have our settings menu. So let's go through the settings and let's uh, show you a couple of things. Uh, so right here we have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, data usage. Data usage you can go to and uh, turn on your data, of course, right here, and that'll turn on your data. And then you can also set a limit for your data. So if you have a carrier that has a data cap, you can actually set your limit right here. And then we're going to go to more settings. So under more settings, you have certain things like airplane mode. You have your hotspot mode right there. Uh, VPN is more for business customers. And you also have NFC and SBeam. This is how it will usually be when you start your phone. You want to just slide SBeam over and swipe to the right. Uh, this is what SBeam will allow you to do. It'll allow you to send um, basically anything on one phone to another. So that's really a nice feature that your uh, Note 2 has. Um, it can do this with an S3, a Note 2, a Galaxy Express, um, and certain other devices. For NFC, uh, you can transfer um, to any other device, um, such as a Windows phone or a BlackBerry phone. Anything but an iPhone pretty much has NFC. Uh, what NFC will allow you to do is transfer over small things such as a website, a YouTube link, or contact information. And SBeam, uh, by using NFC and Wi-Fi Direct, allows you to transfer over big files such as photos, videos, music, anything such as that. Um, you also have all share casts, which uh, can be used if you have a wireless adapter called the All Share Cast Hub, and that'll allow you to connect it to any TV. Uh, check out my video on the All Share Cast Hub to see that. Now here, you also have home screen mode, which uh, you can switch from basic to easy mode, or if you're on Verizon, it'll be standard and starter mode. Uh, starter mode or easy mode are really for first time users that just uh, find Android a bit too complex and that want to go through more basic style. Over here, we also have blocking mode, which we can turn on, and then we can uh, disable incoming calls, notifications, alarms, 
LED indicator. That's a little light bulb that uh, blinks when you have uh, something coming in as well as um, a loud contact. So if you're on a vacation with a family and you'll only want them to be able to contact you, you can make them on the allowed contact list. And of course, you can also do this from a certain time to a certain time. Now, over on sound, we have our ringtones, vibration, volume setting, and if we move up, even uh, things such as uh, when we touch the keys, if they make a sound and things like that. Under display, we have a couple of things. Uh, we have the buddy page, which I personally do not care for. It's just a page that pops up every time you pull out your S Pen um, to write a note uh, or a different kind of note style. So you can uh, use that if you want. You have your wallpaper. This is where you will go to change your wallpapers. Um, you have your LED indicator. And uh, you also have your multi-window. If you do not have multi-window, it means you probably haven't got the new update yet, and I will show you how to do that later. Uh, some of you will have screen mode, not all carriers have screen mode, but it basically can allow you to switch to dynamic or neutral for just a different type of color and view. You also have your screen timeout mode, which um, will be when your screen turns off. And uh, one really nice thing is smart stay. Smart Stay I recommend turning on. Uh, what it will allow you to do is as long as you're looking at your phone, it will not turn off on you. So it's a really nice feature to have. This is where you change your font style so you can have a different font look and you can always get more fonts online as well as you can uh, increase your font size from normal, huge or anything such as that. I would also highlight right here um, so that you display your battery percentage um, at all times. That way you can actually see where your battery is at and just get a more feel for that. You also have your storage and let's go to power saving mode. So power saving mode, if we flip this on, uh, will allow you to do any of these things. The main thing is that with the computer uh, power, with the CPU power saving, it slows down your processor from the quad core that it comes with to a dual core, extending your battery life about four more hours on average. So really nice uh, long extend battery if you choose to do that. Uh, scrolling down, we have our lock screen, which you can then choose to set up any different password type that you want. Uh, face unlock is really a cool feature, but I don't recommend it for most users simply for the fact that you can't do it when driving. Although you shouldn't be using your phone driving, it's just not a feature that I particularly like even when I have my uh, phone mounted on my uh, dashboard. Under uh, backup settings, you should have uh, set up how to back up your phone. I do recommend doing that, of course. If you haven't seen the video on how to set up your device, make sure to check a look at that. And of course, this is where you sign into all of your accounts. And just by hitting add account, you can sign up to anything that's on your phone. So uh, once you download Facebook, you can sign into Facebook. Google, you have to sign in to have an account and uh, many other things. For motions, um, there's a lot that you go through and if you tap any of them, you can actually uh, generally see what it does um, or it will give you a bit of a description. The main one that I turn it on for is uh, these three at the bottom. So uh, swipe your palm when captured, that means that you can scan the phone with your hand basically and do a screen capture, just like that. Um, and then going like this will mute it, that's for right here. And then turn over to mute will just simply mean when you turn over your phone like this, it will mute. All right, and then at the very bottom, about device, or some carriers will have a software update, and then you go here to update your software. So you'll click update, and that's where you update your software. So those are some of the basics. Now I just want to go through you with a brief uh, tutorial on um, certain apps, so how to create a new page, it's just by pushing this plus icon right here, and how to create a folder is just by dragging an app over here. That's how to bring an app from the app drawer to the regular page. And then if you hold down an app, you see at the top right here, we can create a new folder, and we can name whatever we like. I'll name this one Hey. And from right here, we can actually create a folder, put different apps inside of it, and then see what our folder has. Now I'm going to delete this one and remove it off of the page. 
if I ever wanted to remove a page, I can also hold this down page right here I don't need anymore and remove. So the main, app, the main apps that I want to go through are just a couple right here, which are just simply the apps that I recommend. So I'll go over um, must-have apps in another video, but these are the apps that I recommend that everyone should have and that everyone would find a great deal of usage for. So if you have any other questions, feel free to ask. This has been R-I-C-K-Y, the Android Guy.